Now imagine a lawyer who is locked up in prison. Imagine a dark, damp stone cell. Dirty. No food. Just one cup of water in a corner. And a little pail to go to the washroom. Chains all around his legs and his hands. No light. For someone who is a lawyer, who loves to read, who loves to meditate and write, placed in a place without books, and yet he says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say, Rejoice. Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. And this was exactly the story of Paul the Apostle. Someone held the key to his freedom, to his joy, to his hope of seeing another life outside the four walls where he had been thrown into. It was at this time that he said, Rejoice always. Again, I say unto you, Rejoice. Even if someone holds the key to your freedom, to your prosperity, to your success, to your progress, do they hold the key to your hope, to your joy? When it comes to to joy, the Apostle Paul is one you should and I must emulate. He creates a kind of mindset that's a shift from the common mindset that you would expect from someone who was once a noble person and all of a sudden becomes a prisoner. He sees the gift in any circumstance. You know, at this time when he was writing the letters to the, the church in Philippi, and many other churches that he addressed. Paul had been in jail for many years. Yet, in his writings, you sense and feel the joy. His texts were full of joy, full of hope, full of expectation. If I were him, I would be downcast. I will be complaining, discouraged. I might not even be able to pray. Talk less of encouraging other people to still believe. But Paul uses the words rejoice or joy and hope more often than not. More than 10, 15 times he used that word rejoice. He rejoiced in his status is someone that like Paul that will say for me to live or for me to die doesn't matter it doesn't matter even if I even if he had to to pass to to go on to the other side of eternity even if he was no longer going to ever live he said it does not matter Oh, the life of Paul is one that when I read this life, when I read this text, I wonder how could someone who had gone through so much still have faith and hope and joy in the Lord. He had gone from the topmost of elites to becoming a prisoner, spat upon, disregarded, ill-treated. But he rejoiced that his status, his imprisonment will turn into deliverance as he trusts in the prayer of the saints. He believed the prayer of other Christians. And when he hears the news and the testimonies and the stories of those people he's writing to, when he hears their love and their unity, That is enough to encourage Paul the Apostle. 
he encouraged everyone to be glad and his goal was just to let people know more about Jesus he rejoiced knowing that his bonds or his chains were meant for the spread of the gospel of Jesus Christ the gospel of grace hmm the end it turns out that no one could cage his joy no one could keep him captive you couldn't stop his expression of joy (sighs) ah no one can lock up the light inside of you no one can keep you captive when your joy and your hope is far above what anybody can chain down what anybody can lock down what can what anybody can stop Absolutely nothing can stop you from being joyful. And Paul through this is showing us a most and very important spiritual truth. That you can find joy in the darkest of places. And if you cannot find joy in the darkest of places, then you have no gospel. The gospel of Christ is defeated. But if you are able to allow the gospel to shine through the most broken vessel, the most darkest moment, the most broken situation, and the most broken heart, that's when you become a beautiful vessel in the hands of the Lord. You may not be able to rejoice in the middle of fear and death and sin and heartbreaks, but we can rejoice in God himself, in his character, in his person, in his ability to redeem you from anything that you're going through. When everything fails, when any other thing fails, the Lord never does he is our joy and when you choose this in the midst of hardship you radiate a kind of light that people wonder where does this come from when Paul was writing I'm sure he was also writing to his his own self was also encouraging himself in spite of the despair he was going through he was reminding his own soul and his own person that don't look at your situation but look at God look at the all-powerful God the all-knowing God what has look at what he has given to you he has given us so much Gave his life for you on the cross of Calvary. That's a lot. Despite our hardship, we can rejoice in our salvation. We can rejoice in his forgiveness. We can rejoice in the salvation of our soul and in the the presence of the Lord. We can rejoice in the hope of heaven. And the beautiful fact that there is nothing that has happened that God does not know about and that he cannot save us from. Thank God for your life today and ask him to help you find joy in situations, in circumstances, in difficulties. And that's when you will be able to experience the peace of God that passes all understanding and the joy in the middle of this chaotic and complicated hopeless world in which we live in. Bible says that if in this life only we have hope, we are of all men most miserable. May we find joy in the littlest things around us and in our lives and may we be vessels of joy to all around us. God bless you.